Okay, looks like everybody's awake, so I don't want to put anybody to sleep. Uh, I got tendencies to say things happen because they're supposed to happen, or, you know, surprise, guess what's happening? Well, everybody knows I made the steam bike, I made, uh, redid the uh, Delora, got it working pretty good. I like the old felt boiler, it's simple to make, cheap. I'm a cheap guy. And, uh, Go ahead and start it. Yeah, just just a sec, just a second okay. here. Let me know. Okay. Uh, what happened was before I got the Delora, Ken lined me up on a local mobile engine, and I picked up the engine, and then uh, which I think there was about eight people wanted it too, but I was the first one on the list, and it also threw a boiler in there, which I used for a while till we scorched it too bad where I couldn't fix it. So I started making a, a, what you call the old felt boiler, and now I decided I wanted to make a little bigger one because I don't care what motor you have, it all depends on the boiler. You don't make enough steam, that's all that's going to do. So what you call, so I was making a boiler to fit into the Delora, but then what am I going to do with the boiler I just took out of the Delora? So, Chuck out, happened to have another motor, so I got two motors, and I'm thinking, well, I got a boiler just about done, and then I got two motors, all I got needed is the wheels. So might as well try to make it for the racer, the, the eighth mile race, so everything has to be geared for lightness, and uh, we don't know how it's going to do. I had two guys that thinks, oh, the thermodynamics is not going to work, but I'm one of these, try it and see, you know, how do you know, you know, if you don't try something off the wall, you know, you'll never know. So anyways, uh, okay, we can roll it. I started <coughs> using the copper, I like copper, it's easy to work with, and uh, I set up a mandrel and marked off on the lathe, and I'm just winding it, and there's my coils, I got right hands and left hands, so they mesh. Now there's my center drum. I use a six inch this time instead of a half inch. And then those are quarter inch uh, black iron pipes coming out so I could graze it. And uh, to me it was looking pretty pretty, but once it gets soot on there, it looks like black iron pipe. Uh, I, I raised the top. And I, should, I might have to change that a little more because I felt where the, the tops would be coming in, she would be right where the steam would be coming out. And that's my economizer. And the sheet metal around there is just plain uh, to kind of hold things in. Now that's upside down, looking at the bottom, and that was the metal going around there that I had took out because that wasn't doing it. There's my burner, hacksawed all of them. Uh, my pilot light next to my uh, mixing tube. Uh, so far, pretty good. Uh, now this is firing with propane. Propane always burns real nice. Uh, if your slots are below 30 thousandths, you, you don't have a problem with a flame trying to jump inside. And it seemed like it got a real nice burn. Gasoline's another story. Well then I drew up because I had the size of the boiler, I had the size of the motors, and uh, got square tubing off my son, so I started getting with the program. As you can kind of tell, it was kind of cold at the beginning of the year. And uh, like it says, made my own drawings, what I believe it would be, try to made it by the external dimensions of the Style 4 racer, because my main goal was it had to fit in the back of the pickup truck where I got about an inch to spare, you know, for width. And uh, that's basically how it looked. The steam comes around, you always put the throttle on a saturated side so the temperature isn't that bad. Then you can come in for the superheat. Uh, my style was run it to a jack shaft so you could keep the pulses on the motor the same, more uniform more easy, even flow. And on kind of the racer, I don't have to worry about springs. 
I'm trying to keep it as low as possible, so I had to put my chain on the outside. Uh, my, my friend Ron Rogers uh, had castings for the spindles, so I bought off of him and then I made the rest of the axle. And I had to put the fuel tank on it so I could see how far I would come back for my uh, tie rod so it wouldn't hit. And uh, starting to shape it up and the big thing is there I got the dolly blocked up so I could move it out of the way so I could still get Pat's car in the garage. You know, you got to keep her happy. And same thing, Ron Rogers welded up uh, the water tank and I made the seat out of scraps and uh, what you call, uh, yeah, it's just kind of coming along, doing the steering. And like it says, Pat says, I, I keep going, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, because I don't care how you draw it up, you only can go so far and then you kind of, I call it, build it as you go. This is just a ball valve bent around. That's a needle valve where I drilled uh, and made a slot so it slides over. I try to keep my controls easy. And I love my exhaust system. Notice I got uh, a <coughs> little more than one exhaust and uh, made up a disc brake. Uh, that's, that's the uh, economizer I got in the Delora, you know, that's quite a bit different. I made up another oil pump and because, uh, you know, got to pump it in there, but I don't know if I'm going to have to change that or not. I'm having trouble right now with the water pump keeping up and my hand water pump is what I did way back uh, when I first was doing it. That's the bottom of the burner. So you can see where the secondary air come on. And uh, what you call, I, I run uh, like I did where I'm using two types of fuel. I'm using propane and gasoline. And the propane is for the pilot light because it's already a gas, real easy to light. And it's just for relighting the burner. Uh, I was having trouble with the Delora the Delora had, I was making a lot of carbon and that was clogging the jet. And what it turned out is, I watched too many books on Stanley's, but I had the pilot light under my vaporizer and I was cooking the fuel. And once I put some sheet metal around there to block the fuel on the vaporizer, I haven't had a problem of carbon blocking it. And uh, I always kid around is, uh, the guys from the Northeast chapter, uh, they make a prick. Uh, it's like a hundred and, uh, what, 360, you know, where you got a handle and you come around, they'll have a drill so they can clean the jet, the carbon out of the jet. But realistically, they're pushing the carbon back in and it just comes back out and clogs again. And they're picking it back in, you know, a couple miles later and they're saying, this fuel is so bad. Well, they haven't cleaned the carbon up. They're just multiplying the problem. So I seen what they were doing. So I got the end where I can unscrew the end, clean the carbon up and put her back. You know, just like I said, when you see what somebody else is doing, you always think, well, maybe you might have a better idea. But unless you try it, you don't know. You know, and uh, what you call I got the, the racer running a little. Uh, so far the problems I found is I was running a solid rear axle and there was so much drag that I even pulled the tire off the rim. So I changed it to one wheel drive. She pushes a lot easier, steers real easy. Uh, I was having, a, I still got a problem of burning sooty. Now, it seems weird because I'm making a duplicate of what I did on the Delora. And the only thing difference that I could feel is, well, the Delora has got 320 slots. The Racer's got 460 slots. That could be the problem. <laughs> you know, maybe my mixing tube is too small a diameter to pull primary air with it because I'm using primary air and secondary air. 
but right now the racer I don't have any insulation in there I don't have any baffling inside I like to put baffling because if you ever had a fireplace you know hey you got a damper you can cut that damper down and boy the heat really starts coming out well with this type of boiler you can put some sheet metal in there and do the same thing if you put too much you just take some out where if you got so much tubing uh, you just uh, you got to make a new boiler why didn't you stay with the propane for your primary burner uh, you get a lot more heat with gasoline than with propane <coughs> I mean uh, I found there was uh, a couple problems with propane uh, one you never know how much you got unless you can weigh your container okay and then like I said you don't have as much heat so to try to get more heat you're using more volume if on, I found out on the bike uh, if I increase the volume the pressure going to the orifice from to 25 to 28 pounds the drop in pressure is a drop in temperature you're going through a refrigeration cycle where you're freezing up and then you ain't getting nothing through now the difference what I did on the bike compared to what some engineers do where they're running a hot exhaust to try to keep the tank from freezing is I run two separate systems on the bike in other words you got two five pounders you got two regulators you got two burners so if you want to burn 20 pounds uh, pressure in your uh, chamber you got two systems you only need 10 pounds on each so you don't have the big pressure drop so you don't have the freeze up and the best part of it you're going to run out eventually on one so you can still get home on the other one without pushing it it's very very hard on your ego to push it back you know yes can you tell me about the the wall thickness of the copper is it it's l soft it's l you got m l and k k is kind of hard to get by because that's the thickest m is the thinnest i like l and what it turned out is with the l copper i can just bend it around and she won't kink on the bike i was having a big problem of bending it and i was using m so i had to run the spring they got like a spring around it to stop it from kinking and once you bend it the copper still wants to stand now you can't get the spring off so you're fighting with it fighting with it fighting with it so this worked out good where i'm not running the lathe the motor on the lathe i'm just using it to hold it the one side i have it marked every inch and the up uh, the opposite side i started off with a half inch and then marked every inch so that gives me a, a pretty good reference on how to do it and i would just turn it by hand turn it by hand and, and go around and like it says when you get down to where you need you always can it's flexible enough where you can move it a little you know but uh the only way I could see where I could attach this to the drum was by using that uh, black iron pipe, the quarter inch. I could open up the hole a little bit and now concentrate the, the torch on the black iron pipe and then work it over where you could raise it up because it's going in. And so far I've been, uh, I've been running the, the, it a bit, up to 350 pounds. I hydroed it uh, 300 pounds or so, and it hasn't popped out, so I'm hoping for the best, you know, because the, the coils in the Delora are black iron, and it's bulletproof. This ain't bulletproof. You run it out of water, uh, you're going to melt, so that means you got work to do, you know. But... Uh, like I said, I like working with copper because a lot of times, hey, this didn't work. Now you can use this copper on something else. 
you know, clean it up with some steel wool and reflare it and, uh, you know, go to it. But, uh, the, the racer is basically a copy of the Delora because I've been having pretty good success with the Delora. Uh, 